Hi, this is Terry, which you already know if you viewed any of our previous help videos. The objective of this video is to 1. Load the leaderboard software, 2. Identify the radio comm number, and 3. Configure the radio settings. The last thing we'll do is test the radio link for proper operation. Locate the uh, Pro Tournament Scale software disk or the driver disk folder that you downloaded to your computer from our website. In this example, I downloaded the Pro Tournament Scale driver disk to my desktop. Open the folder and double click on the folder named Leaderboard Software. Inside of that folder will be an application file that will load the Leaderboard software into your system. Double click on that file. Next, a security window will open asking if you want to run this program. Click the Run button. An install wizard will then open that recommends that you close all open software before installing. Click on the Next button to continue. The window is the location that your computer is going to load the software to. Just click on the Next button. This screen allows you to change what folder you want the shortcut installed in. Press the Next button to continue. If you'd like a shortcut icon to be installed on your desktop, which I recommend, uh, then make sure that this box is checked. This screen's simply an overview of everything you just set to have the installer do. Press the Install button to begin the installation of the Leaderboard Commander software. Check this box to launch Leaderboard software and click Finish. And that's it. Your leaderboard software is now installed and we're ready to set the COM port number and test the radio link. If your leaderboard radio is plugged in, you'll need to unplug that to configure the software. Let's identify that COM port and get your software going. Locate your desktop icon for Leaderboard Commander and double click on the icon. This will open the main window for Leaderboard Commander and at the top, you'll notice there's some menu items that you can select. Left click on the menu item named Radio. This will open another window called COM Setup. In this window, click on the Device Manager button, which will take you directly to Device Manager. At this time, take the radio hub that is labeled F and plug it into any open USB port. After a few seconds, the Device Manager list will refresh. Click on the symbol next to the port's classification. In this example, USB serial port COM5 was assigned to Radio F for the leaderboard. Double left click on the COM listing to bring up the properties window. Now left click on the port settings tab. In the bits per second window, you'll need to set that for 115,200. The other settings should be 8 data bits, no parity, 1 stop bit, and no flow control. Click OK. We're finished with the device manager now, so just click on the X in the upper right hand corner to close it. Back in the leaderboard software, click the scan button and the computer will scan it for all available COM ports. This is the COM port that was found on this computer. Click OK. Now you'll notice that our current COM setting for leaderboard is COM8. We want it to be COM5, so in the COM list, click the down arrow key, left click on COM5, and now you'll notice that it now says COM5 in our current COM settings, 115200 for the baud rate. Left click on the radio on button. After you turn on the radio, the COM port window will close. To reopen it, click on radio again, and you'll notice that in the port number, there's a number here. With the radio off, it says closed. Turn the radio back on, the screen is going to close, we're going to reopen it, and you'll notice that there is a number. You may not have this particular number, but you will have a number if you have a valid radio connection. That completes the radio setup portion of this video. Next, we're going to load some actual test files and we're going to transmit them to the leaderboard and make sure everything's linked up and working. Click on the menu selection named Radio. Left click on the Radio On button to turn on the radio. Reopen the COM setup window and then click on the button that is named 
test files. Click on the OK button. And then click the close button to close the comm setup screen. The leaderboard screen keeps track of two databases, list A in the top and list B in the bottom. Click on the option screen button and an option screen will open that lets you control how the leaderboard reacts. You'll notice in this section here, you can have it display list A only, list B only, display list A and then list B, or you can have it just display the time and messages only. In the upper right hand corner of the screen, you can control whether display message one shows, message two shows, you can display the big fish, you can take and scroll the contestant's name, and you can limit it to four characters on the name. In the next section down, you can determine how long the screen dwells on the wait. You can also control how long the messages stay on the screen in seconds. At the bottom of the screen, there's a nice section here that lets you take and display either everybody that's in the tournament or say, let's say you only want to display the top 10 people that's in the tournament because that's what's paying out in the money. You can do that also for list B. It's a good idea to take and play with all these options and see how it affects your output and see what works best for your tournament trail. In the lower left hand corner, you want to be sure and have your particular leaderboard model selected. Most of our units we sell are 5 line by 64 pixel. Once you change this, it's going to warn you that you probably need to restart the software so that everything runs smoothly. To exit out of the option window, simply click on the close button. On the main screen of Leaderboard Commander, you'll notice that there's a prefix checkbox. Checking this prefix takes the first letter of the name of the database in front of the numbers, so that when it displays on the leaderboard, you'll know whether you're on list A or list B is being shown. Here's another item I want to point out. Go to the radio screen, take and turn the radio off by setting the radio off button, and then close out the window. You'll notice now at the top of the screen, it gives you a warning that there is no radio link. That completes this video, but be sure and look at the next video because there's a very important step that has to be done to be able to communicate with Tournament Keeper software and be able to display your actual database files.